everybody. My name is Jen and this is Jen Geigley Knits. And today is April 8th, which is the eclipse day. And we're just coming out of the darkness right now here in Iowa. Um, and I'm a nerd for this kind of stuff. Although it did get so dark in my house and it was kind of eerie. Poor Dinah has been kind of not herself. And I think it does affect animals. It kind of affects us all. Everything does feel extra weird. But I was outside in the backyard um, really looking at all the shadows. I do have the glasses, so I was able to kind of take a peek at it a little bit. I'm very careful though, because I don't want to mess up my eyes. <laughs> I'm scared of like burning my eyes. So I did peek a couple times at the progress, the progression, um, but mostly I was super into, oh, that's her. She's running around. She's got the zoomies. Are you okay? Do you want to come sit with me? It's okay. It's a weird day. Um, <laughs> I don't know if she'll come sit up here with me or not. She really likes to sit there, but we'll see. Um, poor girl. It's, it's like a weird, all the birds are weird outside. It's weird. But I was really looking at all the patterns from our trees. Our back patio had a bunch of moon shaped shadows and then the tree shadows just stretched across the whole yard. And then, um, this is like a pottery. My friend makes these <laughs> like a little fruit. Um, you know, strainer and I went out and did like the little moon shadows with it and that was really fun. <laughs> so I was all into it. And then, you know, my poor kids are at school and for the elementary kids, they, they sent home a note that they are not allowed to go outside for recess because not everybody has the viewing glasses. Whoa, she's, she's like stampeding around the house. I don't know if you, you probably can't even hear it, but I'm like, wow, that's not like her. Um, but yeah, so they didn't let them have recess today because they um, couldn't guarantee the safety for everyone, even if you had the glasses that the kids wouldn't accidentally look. But I think some of the science classes went out with a teacher and supervised some glasses wearing. And my daughter in high school, their science class went out um, with the glasses with their teachers. So that's good that they got to experience it because um, it's a big deal. It's really fun. It's like a historic moment. So yeah, so I'm coming out of the eclipse. It's a nice sunny day here in Des Moines, Iowa. So we got to see it. Um, and my house is like brightening up, but it was really dark here earlier. <laughs> it was so weird. thinking I was going to maybe do this week's video in segments because I'm in a weird spot on my crowberry sweater, which is this lopy sweater that I'm knitting out of the MDK Moss Field Guide. <laughs> um, it has an interesting construction where the sleeves are added on with a provisional cast on up here. So I thought I would kind of show how that process works as I get to it, because I'm getting to it right now. So I thought I would kind of show how that works. Also, I got some fun mail today during the eclipse, like in the darkest part of it, the mail came and I was like, oh, <laughs> don't look up mailman. <laughs> uh, maybe they have glasses, I don't know. But number one, the first thing that came that I was so excited about is this book that I've been waiting for, that I pre-ordered, that you've probably seen somewhere on the internet. Hi, Dinah. You feeling better? It's gonna be okay. <laughs> that was weird. Um, this Sock Project by Summer Lee. This I have been waiting for. I've been so excited to get this book. Um, there's been really fun pictures and, you know, things being shared up to this release. And so um, I just love her color combinations the very most, even just her simple socks. The colors she um, chooses just make them anything but simple. So it's a beautiful book, beautiful photos, just color everywhere you look, um, really inspirational, lots of different sock patterns, but mostly the colors. 
It's just so fun. I'm not gonna show any of the pages with words, but some of these photos are just too cool not to share. Um, she talks about yarn, materials, sizing, and fit. Um, we get to the basics, which they're, you know, anything but a plain old sock. That's like, it, color really makes it, and we all know this. You make such a fun project out of a simple vanilla sock. And then there's just tons and tons of information. Um, different heels, different toes. I cannot wait to dig into all of this. Finishing caring for your socks. Look how beautiful in that little basket. Um, 25 socks. There's a chapter called 25 socks. Look how fun. So yeah, I'm excited to dig in. Oh, there's some fade, faded socks with speckled yarn that kind of fade together. I just passed a really good picture. Striped ribbed socks. Okay, so anyway, you get the idea. But this is a super fun book. This is definitely one of those books that is such a good resource to keep around for years to come. One of those things you'll definitely come back to a million times. And yes, I have a sock knitting machine, but this is my, you know, I will never stop hand knitting socks. I could do socks all day long, all year long, forever. So I was excited to get this book. Very cool. And then I got a secret surprise in the mail. I'm going to be unboxing this this week and I'll show it as I, maybe a different day. I don't know. I'm going to open it with my daughter. But this is knitting related, crochet related, yarn related, but also let's zoom in on this sticker. If you're of a certain age group or a certain parenting age group or something, you might recognize this Yo Gabba Gabba sticker, or you might recognize some of these characters. <laughs> I just got out some of our toys because I did a little picture with the box that I just got in the mail. But this is a very exciting project for a certain fan base <laughs> of this show called Yo Gabba Gabba that you might know or you might not, but it's fantastic if you don't know it. It's an older show, not older, but my daughter's age group, so she's 17. This show came out when she was like a baby toddler, like the perfect time. Um, it's a kid's show. It is like big costumed characters and then some animations mixed in and the creator is the um, designer of the Paul Frank characters. And so there's this really exciting collaboration with Allison from Crafty is Cool, my friends at Madeline Tosh, and Yo Gabba Gabba. And the Guy Glee family, we have been some of the biggest Yo Gabba Gabba super fans since the very beginning. And I think the show came out in 2007-ish. We've been there since the first episode. We have every song memorized, every special guest. We have seen the live tours two or three times. On my old blog, I was given tickets to give away. I, I got to give away Yo Gabba Gabba live tickets. And I've been like, we have, we have so much of the, the toys, the merch, the t-shirts, the sweatshirts, the like, all kinds of weird, like these are like the collector's like really nice ones. I'm just missing Tootie, the blue one. Um, but this show has been a big deal and my kids have grown up on this show, both kids. Um, we still occasionally watch it even though my kids are maybe out of that age group and we're obsessed with Yo Gabba Gabba. So in this box, which I'll show you maybe tomorrow if I film again, is something yarn related with Yo Gabba Gabba and my dream collaboration is literally in this box. It's like all of my worlds coming together. <laughs> I'm so excited to be a part of it. Like you have no idea. So this is exciting for me. Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about, but you'll see it soon enough and it's really cool. Okay, moving on to my crowberry, which looks like this right now. <laughs> um, so last night I did this sleeve opening and there is a provisional cast on, which is interesting. And I'm going to show you how that works for the sleeve opening. 
And then you're also keeping some stitches, some live stitches on a holder, which is my barber cord right now, um, for the underarm. And then we did knit some extra rows for the back for the shaping. So this is a little higher than this side and I'm sure we'll pick these up later. Um, but as I was approaching this sleeve, which right now I just put the stitches on the holder, but I haven't done the provisional cast on up here yet. So I was gonna show you how that works because it's really interesting and I thought it was really fun and it doesn't take long. It's not a big deal. It's just kind of different and fun to do. So the way I'm doing it, and I think they suggest like just any provisional cast on, I'm not sure if they specify, maybe they do, but um, I'm doing a crochet cast on and there's many kinds, I'm pretty sure. But I am just doing this one that leaves the stitches available to you live. So I'm gonna tie a knot. I, I am doing a slip knot by accident. I want a regular knot on this end and that will let me know that that is my slip knot side of my chain. And then I'm gonna do a slip knot on my crochet hook and I'm gonna chain 10 more than the number I need. So I have my nice crochet chain that's a little bit longer than I need. I went ahead and cut the tail and I'm going to open that loop up and put the tail through. And then starting with the end with the knot down here, I'm gonna be working into the back of the chain. So this is the V side. I want the other side. And we're looking at the stitches that are like little short lines like a little dash, it's these. So not the V side, those look like the Vs. This is like the dash, I call them dashes. <laughs> and I'm gonna be working into each dash stitch, skipping the first one, I'm going to start with the second little dash. So I think you see my little dashes, like there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. Um, and I'm gonna be working a stitch into each one of those onto my needle and then when you unzip it, it's gonna leave the live stitches there. And so that will make, this will make <laughs> the top stitch row of my sleeve. So then I'm gonna work from there up into the yoke and have these stitches ready for each sleeve to go when I get ready for the sleeves. It's kind of magical. So last night I started like this. <laughs> I think. So with my right hand needle, I am pointing into the, not the first stitch, but the little dash, that first like second little dash. So here I have the knot and then here's my dashes. So I'm gonna take my right hand needle and point it into the dash Use my working yarn, wrap it, and slide this over, and then go into the next dash. So I have reached my cast on number for the sleeve. I'm just gonna leave this crochet chain right there. And now I can join in the round right here and knit around on this round and then I can start my yoke. So now I have two sleeve openings with this crochet cast on which is different than how it's usually done. So that's that was a really interesting thing to do. And I'm excited to see how this turns out. Okay, it's a new day and it's springtime in Iowa. And so that means it's pretty cold still in the morning. 
but then some of these days it's been warming up in the afternoon. But this morning I was all optimistic and thought I would put on this cute short sleeve top. And then it was like, nope, still cold. <laughs> so the cardigan comes back out, but it's okay. So since the last time I was talking to you, whatever day that was, I've just been working away on my crowberry. So yeah, last time I was putting in the provisional cast on for the arms, which worked great. It looks really silly right now, but it worked. And so now there's a little decrease and then you are going up for the color work of the yoke. So I'm up to that now, which is kind of a crop sweater. And I'm gonna have to kind of see, it's hard to try it on when it's like this, because you're kind of, I guess I could, but I don't know, I'm just, I'm just going by the pattern we'll see. I gave it a little extra length, but this is definitely one of those sweaters that you can layer over um, a dress or a long sleeve button down or like a jean button down shirt. So anyway, I'm ready for the color work, which made me pause. So this is the Crowberry sweater from the MDK Field Guide Moss with Helene Magnuson, and I am using Lopi in this rust color and it's kind of like the sample that's in the book and I'll show you the pictures now because that will help you see what I'm going to talk about next. So yeah, I fell in love with those photos and the colors in the sample sweater that they show in the MDK field guide. Sorry, fuzz. <laughs> And these colors are different than anything else I have in my hand knit wardrobe, so that's kind of fun too. So these are the greens I pulled from my stash of Lopi, which I have a good healthy stash of Lopi because it's so affordable and it's kind of fun to collect. And so this color work yoke just needs one skein of each color, or, you know, quite a bit less than one skein. But so these are the greens I kind of picked out and now I'm just deciding what I should use. So there's like a lighter green, a darker green, and then there's bobbles that are the berries. And so, I mean, these two are kind of nice together, sort of cooler green. These two are kind of nice together, more of a yellowy gold green and a you know, gray olive. This is like exactly what this. <laughs> so there's kind of this vibe, there's kind of this vibe, or I do like, I like these two too together. So now I just have to pick my combo, see how it looks. Let me just, okay. So it could be this. Actually, I really like this. Maybe this is what I'm doing. This all kind of goes with, seriously, this is a store-bought sweater, but um, I do love the greens. That is nice. What was my other two favorites? These two. That is also nice. It does kind of help to see it on camera together. Then there was this one, which is a little bit more, hmm, not as exciting maybe. All right, I think I like these. A little bit more contrast. And I like the yellowy gold with this darker, because the darker one is like these branches and leaves coming through. So it does need to have some contrast. I think this is the winner for now. And if I change my mind, you'll, you'll see next time. <laughs> Cause I don't know. Um, so yeah, that is the Crowberry sweater from the modern daily knitting field guide called Moss. And I'm making good progress on that. I really should have done this much quicker. This was the March knit along. They do bang out a sweater in March and I could have done it, but I was just doing too many things at once. <laughs> but it's okay, I'm pretty far. The sleeves I think will be really fast. And then there's a little bit of this moss color work at the bottom of the sleeve, which I love. And then I think this look, you know, color work just goes quickly because it's fun and you're changing colors and you're making the little motifs and um, I get to make the little baubles that are the berries, the actual crowberries, which I looked up online and they're kind of a darker, it looks like a little blueberry, but almost black. So the sample used this kind of heathery, dark gray, black color. I did look through and I have a dark blue, but it looked kind of weird with all the greens and the orange and the uh, So I think I'm gonna just stick to what they did because I love it so much. And I saw on Ravelry, a lot of people did these colors. So <laughs> I think we all loved it. 
And once you read about the moss, you just want to make the moss. So anyway, I do recommend. This is an awesome field guide. All of them are. They're very collectible. You can just throw them in your knitting bag. And then they also come with a PDF download. So if you'd rather work on a digital copy, that's great too. I like to do that sometimes because I can kind of mark it in Acrobat. I use the highlighter tool and then I can highlight my size and put any notes in there that I want to. So anyway, field guides are awesome. I'm a big MDK friend and fan. So love this book, love how this sweater's going. And I'm excited to start the color work. And yes, I think I'm going with these two. It just looks good together. When I last talked to you, I was telling you about a box that came in the mail from our friends at Yo Gabba Gabba. And so since then, that has all been announced. So I can show you this one little thing. It's a crochet kit and it's super exciting. So. I decided I was going to try to fit this all into one video, but I realized once we got this all out and started working on it, this is going to have its own video next week because it deserves it. And it's going to, there's like a surprise ending and there's all this stuff happening with this. So my daughter is crocheting Broby. This is a special new kit from Yo Gabba Gabba. Crafty is cool. Who is Allison Hoffman. She writes crochet patterns and she wrote this pattern and Madeline Tosh. So the yarn is from Madeline Tosh. This kit includes everything you need to make Broby. It's very exciting for Yo Gabba Gabba fans. And the other exciting news from Yo Gabba Gabba this week is that there's going to be new episodes that they are filming, which is huge because we have been waiting years for this. We just thought it was going to be gone, like our favorite kids show was over. My kids luckily grew up on this show and they were in the perfect age group to enjoy it when they were like preschool age, like the perfect children's television learning age. But this show has such an impact that my kids still love it. Lotus is 17, still loves it. She just recently bought like their new merch and wears it to school and to her job at Hot Topic and people comment all the time because her age group still thinks this is so cool because it's part of their core memories. But anyway, um, there's more kits for every character coming out in the months ahead. We are so excited to be part of this little unveiling of this kit and we are working on our Broby. I would show you now, but it's going to be a secret until next week. And there's like a special unveiling we're going to do next Wednesday on Instagram and this whole thing. So we have a plan. It's super fun. Come back next week to see the whole story of this. And I'll be doing that whole episode with my daughter, Lotus, who is in high school and she is the crochet queen. So she's going to be making this and we're just going to kind of show you our experience and talk about it and talk about the kit. And it's really super fun. So that is that. In other knitting news, I had time this week to work on my Tinda sweater, which is a sandness pattern. And I was knitting this during the final four women's basketball games. <laughs> um, here it is in the book. It's a sandness like magazine, one of the most recent ones. And so yeah, I got through another section almost of the last color work stripe and then I'll be dividing for the sleeves and body and just knitting the cream, but it's beautiful and so exciting. And it was good stress knitting. And um, if you didn't know, you probably have heard, <laughs> Iowa women's basketball has been like all the rage this season. I'm not usually a huge sports fan. And I actually went to Iowa State, which is the Iowa Hawkeye rival school. But we are all Iowa fans when Caitlin Clark and this amazing team is doing what they're doing. And I think you've probably heard about Caitlin Clark all, all over the news, like we all have, but it's kind of a big deal. Um, not that she did it all by herself, but she really did help elevate the games and make us all interested and in watching and um, all the ticket sales and all the sports coverage. It's just been kind of special and cool to see our Iowa teams doing so well. And Caitlin actually went to high school super, super close to my house, actually. <laughs> and she was a superstar then. And so just to see our Iowa team doing so well and then playing the teams and the, the final four, the UConn team was amazing. South Carolina, unreal. So kudos to those teams. And those were really fun games to watch, but they were very stressful. <laughs> so this was good stress knitting. And I felt like I got a lot done because I was just like 
doing this, just watching and like on the edge of my seat. So that was kind of like the memories that go into your sweater. That's going to be a very random one that goes into this one. Because I think, what was the other thing I watched? I watched something else, the Super Bowl. Oh my gosh, this is like a new weird sports themed sweater. <laughs> I watched the Kansas City Chiefs like up here. This is taking way too long. This has been on my needles for too long now that I can <laughs> track it back to that game. And then the final four women's game. Um, so I really want to finish this. It, this is going so quickly. This yarn is quite large and it should not be taking me this long. But again, I have too many things on the needles and I'm also working on design projects and my work stuff, just my regular job has been busy. So I don't know. I'm kind of all over the place right now, but I love how this is turning out. It's so pretty. I love, love, love this bright orangey red. I think I'm gonna have quite a bit left, so maybe I can make a little hat out of these two reds, because I think I'm gonna have, well, we'll see. I don't have a lot left. I'm not sure. Anyway, I would buy this again and do something else with it. But that is my Tinda sweater, Sandus yarn. This is, these are not available on Ravelry, I don't think. I think you have to buy these books to get these patterns. But anyway, beautiful sweater, beautiful pattern. Glad that I'm making progress on it. Can't wait to get to the stockinette torso section so I can just fly through that, bust out some sleeves, and then next winter, wear the sweater because it's very heavy and I'm sure I'll get it done when it's nice and warm outside. Another rabbit hole that I have gone down recently is the emotional support chicken, which I've talked about before here. Um, and actually that seed was planted at Rhinebeck last year. I think it was like outside the yarn birds truck at Cake Palooza. They had a bunch of emotional support chicken kits with all the names, like the official kits for Knitting Tree in LA. And I kept thinking about it, but I didn't think I had room in my suitcase. And I was like, do I need a chicken? I don't really need a chicken, but now I'm seeing all the chickens pop up all over online and they're so cute. And now I feel like I do need a chicken. And then, then my sweet friend Ruth sent me a couple of extra yellow eyes because um, she had like a multi-pack of eyes and you don't need that many eyes. So then I have the perfect yellow eyes. So then I went stash busting and then I decided, wouldn't it be fun to make a Noro emotional support chicken? Bright and funky and fun. And so I went through and found a bunch of fun stash like remnants of Noro. And I think this could make a very cool chicken. Don't you think? So I've got this really good, most of it's curry on, um, this good purpley blue peach mix. That's great chicken colors. Then I have this really good blue, green, purple, gray. That's a great chicken color. <laughs> got this super weird one with like really bright orange and blue and brown. There's a lot going on in this one. And then this one's actually perfect chicken. This might be the body color or like the majority of it. Cause look at those chicken feather colors. So good. So that's my new plan for the emotional support chicken. I wound off the, this chunk of yellowish Noro for the beak possibly. I found some bright red pink for the waddle and the comb. And I think this could be really fun. So yeah, not the most pressing, like urgent project, but it would be fun when I'm ready to cast on a chicken. This is like set aside in a bag with the safety eyes from my friend Ruth. Thank you, Ruth. So I'm all ready to go. It is now Friday. And so you are seeing a mashup of three days worth of weird knitting talk, but that's just how this week has gone, so it's fine. But I have decided, I've made a decision on my Pearl Soho Linen Quill mini set. Um, if you watched a few episodes back, you'll know that I was debating between the two free patterns for this big kit from Pearl Soho. It includes 40 skeins, of these minis that are not even minis to me. These are like pretty large, normal size skeins. You get 40 of these in this set. And these are the brights, but there's a lot of neutrals. It's just a beautiful, beautiful set. And they have two beautiful patterns that are free. They have one for a beautiful scarf that blends all the colors together. And then a gorgeous blanket that I still 
I still want to make both, but they have you split up these colors into warms and cools, like two separate bags and pull from the bags for both of the projects. So I'm, I'm doing that. But also I am swatching and I have made a decision, finally. <laughs> I am going to swatch for the blanket. Like everybody cheer, everybody who voted for the blanket. <laughs> Um, the blanket wins for now, but I'm still making the scarf either out of scrap, uh, stash yarn or I think I might have leftovers because I have a plan now. I am going to swatch today for the blanket with this yarn held double. I swatched for the blanket um, holding the yarn just single like the pattern suggests. And it is a thinner blanket, just personal preference. I like mine a little bit thicker like just a nice lap blanket for the couch. Um, nothing too crazy heavy, but this is, um, gosh, it's beautiful, this yarn. <laughs> what is the weight? I believe this is knit on anywhere between a US size two and five. So three to 3.75 millimeter needles, which is kind of small. If you double it, you can knit it on a US 7, and that to me is a better blanket weight for what I like and what I like to knit, because we were talking a lot in the comments about how long it was taking people to do a row on the US 4s. And eat, there's I think there's like a four row repeat, and some of the rows take a longer amount of time, like the one person said 45 minutes maybe per row. And I could see myself getting discouraged or bored or like, tired of that. This is just, I have a lot going on. <laughs> I love knitting on small needles. I love making socks. I love certain things, but I think a blanket, I'd be happier on US 7s with the thickness, with the length of time for a row, because it'll be less stitches. So I'm just going to swatch and find out what my stitches per inch are, so I can figure out how many I want to cast on for, I think it had 50 inches wide on the finished blanket. So I could shoot for that, but I might even go to 60. And then I have a whole kit to work through, as you know. <laughs> but then these do go on sale, like they have Pearl Soho brand yarn sales pretty often on their website where things are 20% off. So when the next one comes around eventually, and whenever I knit through all of this, I will splurge on a second, I know, don't hate me, a second box of the set of this yarn. And then I'll definitely have enough to make the blanket. And I think I will have leftovers to make the scarf too. And then I won't be so torn on the whole thing. And I think I'll, I think that's just like the perfect way for me to do it. Cause the scarf is held double on US seven needles as well. So that's two projects in that weight that I think are better for me. And I'm so excited to get this blanket going. I mean, just the colors are so exciting. And then pulling two at a time at random. And then if you just really hate it, you can put one back and try again. But that just sounds like so much fun. Go watch that episode if you, have, if you don't know what I'm talking about. I went through a whole episode where I went in depth the reasons why and why I shouldn't pick each project and then I couldn't decide still and everybody voted in the comments and you guys were so nice to like leave all your suggestions and questions and ideas and a lot of you said do it double for the blanket and that's the winning idea so I decided I'm gonna go swatch and if I have time left today I'll show you that swatch and I'll kind of show you how it's knitting up. Okay, I have some progress to share on my Crowberry color work. I just got into it a teeny tiny little bit, but I wanted to see both of those colors appear and see what they're going to look like. Um, and I think it's good. It's just the beginning of this leaf motif with the, the moss. And so I think these three are a good combo together. I like the contrast. I like the two greens and the mossiness of this. And with this, it goes, but I was having a hard time deciding between this golden green or celery, which I don't have here, but a different lighter green. But this one I think has more contrast and works really well with the others. And so I'm going with this and then coming up in the next few rows of the color work is the bobbles. And so I'm excited to see what those look like. 
I read that some people just did not do the baubles. I really like the baubles and I like the idea that they are berries and so I'm gonna do the baubles. And then I also read some people did the baubles after the fact, so knitted the whole sweater, but left a stitch where they should go and then added their baubles later on. So that's an option too. But I think I'm just gonna go for it as written and see how they look. And I really like the little berries. That's kind of the whole point of the crowberry. So that is how it's looking so far. I'm really liking it. It's definitely like fall vibes. And so I'll be excited to wear this in the fall or now or whatever, we'll see. I can just really picture it with like a jean button down underneath it. And I just think that's really cute. So that's the crowberry. Quick little update on my swatch for my Pearl Soho blanket. It's called the Incredible Blanket. Um, I'm gonna hold both yarns double. It does work really well. And this makes a really nice fabric. The thickness of it feels a lot better to me for what I'm looking for personally. So I am swatching on a US seven needle, which is the size they suggested when you hold this yarn double for the scarf. So I know this is about right in the right ballpark. So on a US 7, 4.5 millimeter needle, I am getting four stitches per inch holding this double in this stitch pattern, which is a really interesting stitch pattern. I don't think it's boring, it's very fun. It almost looks like little scallops. It's really interesting. And so it's worked on a multiple of two stitches. So I'm gonna cast on an even number of stitches and I also think, I think their dimensions finished are like a 50 inch square. I want my blanket to be 60 inches across. So I think I'm gonna cast on 240 stitches, four stitches per inch should get me to a 60 inch blanket width wise. I'm not worried at all about row gauge because this isn't gonna fit like a sweater. I'm just gonna knit to the length I want, but as long as I have the width like at a certain size that I would like. 60 inches is perfect for me, I think. Um, so I'm gonna cast on 240 stitches and actually start this thing, divide my yarn up into the bags and get that all going. And then I'm gonna knit the incredible blanket, I think over the course of a year. I'm not putting a deadline on it. I don't care, it doesn't matter when this gets done, but I really wanted to get it swatched and on the needles. And I think this is the perfect solution for the way I want this blanket to turn out. So I'm very excited about it now. The swatch itself was really fun and fast. And I think this is way more doable for me personally on a US 7 instead of a US 4. And I like a thicker blanket. I just like how this feels. It's not heavy, but I like something with a little substance. So yeah, I'm gonna get going on this and maybe next time I'll have something to show on a real like full-sized cast iron. That's all I have for this week. I hope you're having a good weekend. Our weekend is kind of full of fun plans. Um, Lotus and I are gonna be doing some more stuff with the Broby kit. There's a big reveal coming next Wednesday. Follow me on Instagram if you don't already, because I do post a lot there. I post almost every day. But there's gonna be some fun stuff with this and a big surprise post on Wednesday. So watch for that. And I'll be YouTubing about that whole experience and the whole making the Broby process next Saturday. It is really fun, even if you don't crochet, even if you're not into this type of thing, come and see because you gotta hang out with my daughter and watch her put this together. It's very, very fun, I promise you. And then um, my daughter's band, we are working on merch. And this is really fun for me personally because um, I'm a graphic designer and I'm like, yes, let me help with this. So. We have a friend that's in a hardcore band and he make, he's he been making like DIY merch for the past 20 years. So he let us use his button maker. And so we are hosting the band this weekend for a button making party. So we've got like the printouts ready and the plastic and the little pin pieces. It's very exciting and fun. So we got that and he printed us a whole stack of band t-shirts. Their band is called Serotonin. They are on Spotify. <laughs> and we went with a cat theme because we all love cats. And so I came up with this graphic for our first one. We have several others that we want to do and the, the band all draws and is artistic. So they're going to make artwork, I'm sure too. 
but I thought that was a pretty fun first shirt and I bet these will sell fast at their next shows. I'm really excited. Um, they have a bunch of shows coming up in this summer and they're playing a safe space prom at the Des Moines Art Center. So it's like a lot of stuff is coming up. So I'm so excited. We're getting the merch going and that's just really fun. So I'm excited to have them over for pizza and button making this weekend. Plus the Broby thing. What else are we doing? There's like a lot of other things going on. Work. I have art spectrums at the art center, which is an art class that I help co-teach um, for kids on the autism spectrum and their families. So we have that pretty much all day Sunday. And so there's a lot happening. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is thanks for watching. <laughs> Let me wrap it up. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out here always. Um, come back next weekend for a new video. I'm uploading a new video every Saturday morning. So stop back and watch that. If you like this kind of video, I have a whole playlist called Knit With Me and it's full of videos just like this. So if you're bored, go check those out. And I hope you're having a great, good weekend and a good week ahead. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.